Today, inshallah, is our episode 10 in the series of our presentation discussing the anecdotes, the stories, and the biographies of uh, Allah's prophets and messengers. Peace and blessings be upon them all. Uh, in the episode number 10, inshallah ta'ala, we will discuss the personality of our prophet, his heart, peace of, and blessings of Allah be upon him. In our previous episodes, we spoke on the eight Allah's messengers and the prophets. Uh, the prophets we discussed earlier are Prophet Adam, Idris, Noah, Hud, Saleh, Ibrahim, Lut, Ismail, and today, inshallah, is Ark. That is uh, number nine among the prophets, inshallah. Prophet uh, Ishaq, peace be upon him, was uh, one of uh, Allah's uh, prophets, has also been mentioned in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Safat, verse 112, وَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِإِسْحَاقَ نَبِيًّا مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And we have given him the glad tidings of uh, Ishaq, as a prophet among the righteous. Allah Ta'ala gave his father glad tidings of uh, his heart and one of uh, Allah's prophets, peace be upon them all. His father was Prophet Abraham, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and his mother was the first wife of uh, Abraham, that is Sarah. As we explained yesterday in discussing the biography of uh, Ismail, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, that Abraham spent many years with his wife Sarah as his first wife without any child. And when she saw that her husband was interested in children, or at least a child, and she couldn't get anyone, she encouraged him to get married to Hajar that was under Akia. He accepted that idea, he got married to Hajar, and Hajar put to bed Ismail, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And still he returned Sarah, and she was living in an area around Palestine, while Hajar and her son Ismail, that is Ishmael, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, were in Mecca uh, around the area of uh, Kaaba. So Sarah was with her husband in Palestine. What actually happened when she reached around 98 years of age, she got a glad tidings that she was going to put to bed a baby. And she was flabbergasted. She was surprised, as in the Quran. And same with her husband, because then Ibrahim was around 120 years old when he received the glad tidings of uh, 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 Ishaq, peace be upon him. And Ishaq is being translated in English as uh, Isaac. Isaac is Ishaq, peace be upon him. His name has been mentioned up to 17 times in the glorious Quran in so many places, at least the name Ishaq, referring to Prophet Ishaq or Prophet Isaac, peace be upon him, has been mentioned or repeated 17 times in the glorious Quran. There is no time to figure out all the names, but it is a challenge or an encouragement or rather a homework to students of knowledge to go through the Quran from beginning to end to discover these names and look at specifically what the verses say about the personality of his heart, peace be upon him, as it is almost impossible to explain everything about his personality from A to Z within the time frame of our presentation, which is usually around 30 minutes on in all. So this is a challenge. However, the name 
has been mentioned in some chapters, I may point out majority of the chapters in order to simplify the assignment. His name has been mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, the same in Surah Ali Imrana, the same in Surah Al-Nisa, then the same in Surah Al-Araf, then the same in Surah Ibrahim, before then in Surah Yusuf, his name has also been mentioned there, then Surah Maryam, his name has also been mentioned there, Surah Al-Ankabut, his name has also been mentioned there, Surah Al-Safat, his name has also been mentioned there, and Surah Al-Sad. These are the majority of the chapters in which the name of Ishaq has been mentioned, specifically in the Glorious Quran, and in most of the places the name has been mentioned only once. However, in some chapters, like in Surah Al-Hud, the name has been repeated twice. In Surah Al-Yusuf, the name has also been repeated twice as well. However, in Bapara, his name has been mentioned up to three times. The name is Ark, peace be upon him. Maybe I will give an example with that of uh, Bapara. For example, in Bapara it has been mentioned three times, more than any other chapter in the Glorious Quran. Like in Bapara, but 133, his name has been mentioned there. قَالُوا نَأَبُدُ إِلَاهَكَ وَإِلَاهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَائِيلَ وَإِسْآقَ إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ This is his name has been mentioned there. And at the same time in Baqara, but 136, his name has also been mentioned beside the first one. So, if you go through, you will discover his name has been mentioned. قُولُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَائِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ His name has also been mentioned. أَمْ تَقُولُونَ إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَائِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ This in Baqarah, verses 133, 136, and 140. So his name has been repeated, not even far from one another. Verse 133, 136, and what? 140. So it is only in Bakara that the name of Ishaq has been repeated three times. But in other places, usually only once, except in places like Surah to Hud and uh, Surah to Ibrahim, uh, Surah to Yusuf, these are some of the places where the name has been repeated twice. So his name has been mentioned 17 times in the Quran, and the actual meaning of Ishaq, like in Hebrew language, meaning he will rejoice, or he will smile, or he will love. And even in Arabic, many ulama ayyut, may, Allah, may Allah's mercy be upon them, that the origin of Ishaq, the word, is related to abdahik, meaning smiling or laughing. Why? Because at the actual time that his mother and father received the glad tidings of giving birth or putting to bed, they were all surprised to the extent that they laughed. So actually the name is related to that meaning like smiling or laughing or rejoicing because at that time it couldn't make sense to them that they were going to put to bed a baby boy so that is why they were able laughing and uh, smiling at the same time with a form of rejoicing in some ways so Ismail peace and blessings of Allah be upon him was older with 13 years after Abraham was blessed with Ismail, 13 years later, then he also received a glad tidings of uh, having another child, that is prophet Isaac, or rather Isaac, peace be upon him. It was at that time he received that glad tidings. And when Ismail was under his, uh, Isaac was under the care of his father, to the extent that he reached up to 40 years, and his father encouraged him to get married. So he planned to get married from Canaanites living with them in Palestine. And his father was more interested for him to get married in Iraq. Because of this, his father asked one of his lieutenants to travel to Iraq to find out at least a righteous wife or a potential wife for his own son. So that gentleman traveled to Iraq and it was there he found a wife 
that later Isaac got married to her. And so many people argued that their mother, uh, Sarah, uh, put to bed two children, Isaac and his brother that we will discuss later. So in the Quran, if you go through, in all the 17 places you will discover that Quran did not speak extensively on the da'wah or engagement of his heart when it comes to inviting people to Allah's religion or conveying the message or the religion that was revealed to his father. In all the places if you go to, you will discover that uh, uh, Idris that we discuss as the second prophet and his heart so far are the ones that Quran doesn't speak much about their own mission or their prophethood. The message has been very precise and concise. It is because of this what has been mentioned more with regard to uh, Isaac or Isaac, peace be upon him, is more on giving birth to him by his mother and what actually transpired when Allah's angels came to his parents to give them the glad tidings of uh, having a baby boy. So this is what Quran emphasizes more with regard to his ark, peace be upon him. So because of this we will discuss uh, what actually happened between Allah's angels on one hand and his parents on the other as in the Quran. Even the discussion inshallah is going to be superficial. If you read the Quran for example in Surah Zariyat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about what transpired between his parents on one hand and angels on the other. The same in Surah Hud. For example, in Surah Hud, verse 71, verse 72, and verse 73. In these three verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expounds to us clearly what actually happened when angels came. These angels were three in number. Only one has been mentioned in the books of a tafsir and uh, the books of a hadith. That is, Angel Jibril came along with two angels. Some books reported that the two angels were Israfil and another angel. And another books of tafsir reported that the three angels that came to Abraham and his wife were Angel Jibril, Mikael and Israfil. However, what has been established beyond any doubt is the name of uh, Jibril. But the two other angels, most of the books were, are very silent on their names. However, what is important is not the name, but rather the message they came along with. So they came to Prophet Abraham with his wife. At that time, at that time she was 98 years of uh, age, around that, and he was 120 years old. So they confronted them, like in Surah Hudu, verse 71, وَمْرَأَتُهُ قَائِمًا فَبَحِكَتْ فَبَشَّرْنَهَا بِإِسْحَاقِ وَمِنْ وَرَى إِسْحَاقِ يَعْقُوبِ وَمْرَأَتُهُ and his wife, she was just standing, by the time these angels came to him, فَبَشَّرْنَهَا بِإِسْحَاقِ She laughed. Why she laughed? And this is what actually happened if you go to Surah Tuzariyah, Verse 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and even 30. وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ بَيْفُ وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ بَيْفُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْمُكْرَمِينَ has reached you the story of the other guest of Abraham, meaning these three angels, as in Surah Zariyat, verse 24. So, when they came to Abraham and his wife, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. When they came, she laughed. Why she laughed? The verses of Surah Zariyat, verse 24, 25, 26, and 27, explain to us clearly why she laughed. If they came to him, they said, When they came into him, when they entered into Abraham's room, they said to him, Salama, peace be upon you. Qalu salama, qala salam. And he replied by saying, Peace be unto you too. Kaumun munkarun, but he said, It looks like you are people unknown to me. 
because they were not known to him. In verse 26, فَرَاغَ إِلَىٰ أَهَلِهِ فَجَاءَ بِإِجِلِ سَمِينَ Then he went to his family, he entered into his house, and he came out to these three angels, not knowing they were angels. He only said to them, Kaum munkaru, you look like people not known to me. But they did not say they were angels. They only remained silent. So he went in and he brought out a roasted calf. A roasted calf just to entertain his guests, his visitors. Then he presented to them. He placed that roasted meat before them. And he said, It's better than to say, Kul or could you eat? It is more honorable to say, Can't you eat? Allah ta'akulun? So they couldn't eat. Fa'aw jasa minhum khifa. Immediately he perceived, he conceived a form of a fear. He was frightened. Why? Because based on their tradition, when a visitor comes to you, you are to entertain him with anything delicious available at home. And when he turns it down, based on their tradition, they will say, this is an evil visitor. That is why it is always respected as long as you are not fasting and at the same time you don't have any genuine reason that will prevent you from eating or drinking. When you visit someone and he presents something to you, you have to at least take part of it and eat or drink. It's encouraging. It is a form of a trust that you trust him. So, فَأَوْ جَسَ مِنْهُمْ And immediately he was frightened, he was worried. قَالُوا They say, لَا تَخَفْ Fear not. They say, fear not. فَبَشَرُوهُ بِغُلَامٍ عَلِيمٍ And they gave him a glad tidings of a, an intelligent child, an intelligent soul. That intelligent soul was prophet Ishaq. Peace be upon him. They just gave him the glad tidings. Meaning they were angels. So angels do not eat. They don't eat. Their food is always to glorify Allah subhanahu wa When they glorify Allah, that is their own food and drink. When they glorify him, that is sufficient. بِغُلَامٍ alim. فَأَقْبَلَ تِمْرَأَتُهُ فِي سَرَّةٍ فَسَخَّتْ وَجَهَهَا Then his wife came forward immediately. And she even hit her face. وَقَالَتْ أَجُوزٌ أَكِيمٌ As his wife, an old woman, a barren old woman, she was barren, not only barren, an old woman of 98 years of age, and you are telling, you are telling him that she, she was surprised. Because why? She was 98 years of age or thereabout. 98 years old. And he was 120 years old or thereabout. So both of them were surprised. So what actually happened? They said this is what you are on, this is what you are not with. And your Lord is all wise and all knowing. He is all knower. So, this is about the story of a Lord, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, which we discussed earlier. So, in this verse in Surah Zariyat, starting from verse 24 up to verse 30, you will discover that is what actually transpired. So, she, she laughed. And so, Ulama said the reason why she laughed could either be one of the two. Either because of that glad tidings that she was going to put to bed a baby boy, or because of the glad tidings they conveyed to Abraham that the three angels were on their way to the people of Lut, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, in order to destroy them, as we discussed in our number 
eight episodes. So according to some, that was the reason why she laughed. So it could be either of the two. Either because of that glad tidings or because of that glad tidings of uh, destroying the people of Luth because of uh, sodomy they used to commit. It could be because of both of them. So what Quran says in Surah Hud, starting from verse 71, we can go back there. When they came, these three angels, she was standing. Fabahikat. Then she laughed. Wamraatuhu qaima. Fabahikat. Fabasharna habi isaq. And we gave her that glad tidings of having isaq as her own child. Wamiwara isaq yaqub. And after isaq, isaq will also give birth to Yaqub, that is Jacob. Peace be upon him. Because his ark was the father of Jacob. He gave birth, uh, he, he, he was his son. So because of this, if you look at in this verse, the name his ark has been repeated, has been mentioned twice. وَمْرَأَدْهُ قَائِمَا فَضَحِكَتْ فَبَشَرَهَا بِيْسَا وَمِنْ وَرَا إِسْحَاقِ يَعْقُوبِ So this is one of the places, the chapters in which his ark has been mentioned twice. In the same verse, his name has been mentioned twice. Immediately when they told her that glad tidings, she said, wow. Just she was surprised. She was, she was flabbergasted. How can I give birth? I am old. 90 years, 98 years old. And here is my husband. And he is also old. Why 20 years? How can that happen? Qalu ata'ajabila bin amrillah. Then in verse 73, the angels said to her, ata'ajabila bin amrillah, are you surprised? With regards to Allah's decree, are you flabbergasted with regards to Allah's destiny? Rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu alaykum ahal al-bayt. This is Allah's blessing and his mercy upon you, the household of uh, this family, meaning the family of Ibrahim. So this is what actually happened. So at that time she was 98 years old, and her husband was around 120 years old. They received this glad tidings of uh, having a child that is his heart. And later on, she put to bed his heart. When she put to bed his heart, before that, when Allah Ta'ala, later on after she put to bed his heart, Allah Ta'ala blessed him. Why? Because he said, the Gulaib bin Alim, an intelligent son. It was highly intelligent. That is why almost all the prophets of uh, Banu Israel emerged from the genealogy or progeny of uh, his heart, peace be upon him. Almost all of them. And as we said in our discussion, of the personality of our prophet Noah, peace and blessings be upon him, that he was the father of all prophets. This can also be said to Abraham, peace and blessings be upon him. From the time of Abraham to the end of the last, to the time of the last prophet, our honorable prophet, prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, the most honorable of Allah's creators. You can safely say that all the prophets that came after Abraham are somehow related to Abraham, meaning their own progeny and their own genealogy related to Abraham 